I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review. And this time it is a request for Joe. Thank you so much for that. If anyone wants to request pretty much any type of review, re reaction, movie topic, like I say, pretty much any type of video, you'd request to either send it directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. I'll try to get to it as soon as I can. Again, thank you. And this is for Shivers. Now, Shivers is a very early David Cronenberg film. Might have been his first horror movie. I don't think it was his first film, but his first horror movie. This is when he was making films in Canada. And apparently when it came out, a lot of people in Canada supposedly didn't like this because of how violent it was, which it's not that violent. I think maybe, maybe the subject matter. Because I thought it was an interesting idea. And that's why overall I did like the film where it takes place in this luxury apartment complex which looks fantastic i mean the beginning of the film has a slideshow the type of slideshow that someone gives to try to sell you hey this is a wonderful place come here it tells about how there's everything there's you know a medical facility there you buy products there i wish some of those were utilized more in the movie some of these locations they set up like the store areas but it's like wow this seems like a great place literally you could not even have to leave this apartment complex with how luxurious it is and in the beginning you're wondering what's going on because you have this older guy that looks like lucio fulci honestly he's fighting and strangling this woman puts her on a table does surgery on her but then pours this type of acid into her stomach and then he slices his own throat that's how the movie starts and you're like what the hell where's this going what's going on uh, our main character is this doctor and he has this friend who's a nurse and what you come to find out is there's these parasites which you have to wonder if slither i know the director Slither said that Night of the Creeps he never saw, which is hard to believe when you see Night of the Creeps and then Slither. But if he didn't see Night of the Creeps, then he must have seen this film. Because, for example, there's one scene dealing with a bathtub, which seems very similar to the bathtub scene in Slither. With this parasite. Even the parasites kind of look like the parasites in Slither. So I have to think, Shivers, this must have been an influence on it. And what it does, it turns people into sex maniacs. <laughs> That's pretty different. Usually it's, they need blood, they need brains, they need something. No, sex maniacs. They want sex. And they'll grab you and they'll get the parasite in you, but then orgies and feeling you up and all that kind of stuff 
And again, that, that's not an idea that I've seen a whole lot. And that's what made it a bit interesting because it was off the beaten path, so to speak. For a lower budget horror film, the acting was fine. Between average and fine. Weird moments. Of course, it's a David Cronenberg film. Of course, there'll be weird moments. Like one of them has a parasite and he doesn't talk to his wife. But when his wife leaves, he starts talking to his stomach that has these convulsions and bubbling up because the parasite's in there. And talking like, oh, good boy. You and me are going to be good friends. <laughs> yeah, David Cronenberg, I thought, showed, even in this early stage of his career, nice pieces of direction for example when a cleaning lady in the background we know it, but she doesn't that there's a trail of blood from like a grate something slithered all the way around like that was a nice reveal and it's like oh shit she doesn't notice but we notice later on there's a character that goes outside ready to steep and it's a wide shot but as he gets closer like over here 50 people just slowly descend out of the darkness and then like another 20 people and it gives you that oh shit moment <laughs> now the parasites they're not the best of effects they're very low rent special effects so again you could tell that the budget was low for this and when I think of David Cornenberg you do think sometimes you think of special effects you think of the fly you think of video drum you think of naked lunch all three films have some very interesting and at the time state of the art practical effects but again this was not one of them because this is very early on in his career I'm, I don't remember what the budget is I'm trying to see if I can look it up and what it, by the way if it comes to David Cronenberg stuff I didn't say that my favorite is The Fly. I do like Videodrome. I do like Naked Lunch. I do like The Dead Zone. I would say those are my favorites. I mean, Stereo, Crimes of the Future I never saw. Rabid, I've heard of, but I haven't seen. Fast Company, I didn't see. The Brood, I could not get into. I don't know. I mean, The Brood, honestly, I was disappointed in it. Scanners, I never liked. I liked the sequels more, in particular, Scanner Cop. But yeah, I would say The Fly, Videodrome, The Dead Zone, and Naked Lunch are my top four favorites. To me, the worst one is Cosmopolis. That's the most boring fucking thing. A History of Violence is good. Existence. I thought it was one of those movies that it tried to be Videodrome, but with video games, to me, it seemed like a poor imitation of it. You even had a gun that was trying to be a cancer gun. It just seemed like Cronenberg ripping off his own movie, which I didn't understand that. Wes Craven kind of did it with Shocker in terms of Elm Street, but Shocker I thought was a better movie than, say, Existence. Existence had like 10 different endings, it seems, too. Oh, you thought it ended here? Not yet. Oh, you thought it ended here? Not yet. It's like, fuck on. Fucking hell. But this one, it stars Paul Hampton. He was our main character. Joe Silver. Lynn Lowry. Probably the only recognizable name to people would be Barbara Steele, who was in the original Black Sunday from way back in the 1960s. She was also in Piranha in 1978. She was in Silent Scream 1979, which I reviewed. Yeah, mostly people remember from Black Sunday in 1960. Again, what made it interesting is the weirdness. Like you have this, as more and more people get turned in this apartment complex you see different things like these two girls they're crawling on their hands and knees they have leashes on them like they're dogs 
And then we never come back to them. It's like a very brief shot, and you're like, what the fuck is that? I didn't never go back to that. It's like one of those you know, what the hell type of things. And they're hungry for love. Once in a while, there's a weird bit of editing. For example, a doctor and a nurse, they're talking to this old couple. And this old couple were attacked. They're near this elevator. While they're talking, you have this random shot it cuts to the outside at night showcasing other buildings while they're still talking. And then it goes back to the characters talking. And it made me go, why that edit? Like people are talking to a, to two people. They're talking, they're talking. Now imagine me talking and talking. Then all of a sudden, I cut to this shot here as I'm still talking. Then all of a sudden, you go back to me talking. The dialogue hasn't stopped. You'd be like, why that? That's what I thought. So once in a while, there's a weird bit of editing there. Like I said, the effects of the parasites are low rent. The ending, I'm not the biggest on, but at the same time, I don't know. Like the way it was handled was at least made me interested as to what would happen next in a weird way. I don't know, for some reason, it didn't make me horribly mad, if that makes sense. But yeah, interesting concept, decently well done. I like the fact most of it takes place in one location, apartment complex. Someone said it's almost like a body statue with a little bit of Assault and Prison 13. I'm like, well, it doesn't have the action of Assault and Prison 13, but I get it, like, this whole, the one location idea. So yeah, I didn't mind the film. I thought it was an interesting thing. Like you said, as David Cronenberg did his first hands into the horror film pot, he would be much more of a, how do I put it, edges shaved off, able to flourish a bit more later in the dead zone, the fly, video drum, those type of horror films. But like I said, this is an interesting start. Interesting start to it, so. I'm glad I saw it. I've heard about it for a while. I was a bit uneasy because I was really disappointed in The Brood. This one, not too much. Like I say, the acting's okay. I wouldn't say I loved any of the characters, but I didn't hate any of the characters either. Not a lot of characters, not a lot of backstory or development. So it's not like I knew a whole lot about the characters and the people in the apartment complex. So when they do get turned, I'm like kind of indifferent on it. So I do think that could have been improved. Because I did, you, I'm sitting here trying to think what I can really say about the characters other than their profession. And one's a doctor, one's a nurse, this and that. There's really nothing else I can say about the actual characters. So it seems like it's more of the idea, the concept that drives the film and not the characters. Which is not, honestly, the other Cronenberg films, my favorites, the characters do drive it. Jeff Goldblum, Gina Davis in The Fly, Christopher Walken in The Dead Zone, you know, James Woods in Videodrome. You have interesting concepts and great special effects, but the actors and characters do drive those films quite a bit so again it's a nice start there's room for improvement i think he did improve later on but i would take this over scanners the scanners i thought was rather boring other than the head explosion uh, the brood i just i could not get into that for the life of me so not bad movie shivers like i said i think slither must have been influenced somewhat by this especially the, the bathtub scene where this parasite comes out of the, the bottom of the tub and starts attacking her and 
I think it was also interesting the idea because it really is like a living STD. And yeah, we realize this is before AIDS. This is before the AIDS epidemic. But yeah, here's a story about this technically living STD going from person to person to person. Only this is a different STD. This is the more you want to have sex, it seems, as people turn to you want to transfer your in this case parasite but you just say your seed your fluids and this other person gets affected to their detriment sadly so you could look at it that way which makes it a little bit more interesting i think by this point std wasn't really a known thing maybe i'm wrong but it seems like you heard that more getting to the 80s than in the 70s. Again, I could be wrong on that. But with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. It's worth a look if you like David Cronenberg stuff. It's at the very least interesting idea. And we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.